to another episode of Five Idiots Talking Sports. This is episode 14, where we continue our discussion about reproduction weapons and figures. Enjoy. And yeah. that's a good point, Shane. There are repro figures out there. They've actually went as far as they actually make reproduction figures. It's crazy. Yeah. And, you know, I just want to say that none of us is a maestro at this exactly, but we're pretty dang close, I think. Um, because and it it comes from experience and also getting burned, like salt burned. Yep. <laughs> All right. There are so many salt burn repros yeah. of the Endor Black. They're yeah. they're all over the place. Now, John, is that the witch's finger or is that a no, different this is, one? This is the it's salt one. one. Okay. And it looks really daggum close. <laughs> this looks really daggum close to. Um, I do have a witch's finger in here. I'll show you in a second. I love the witch's finger. That's the best one. <laughs> uh, but, oh, gosh, I guess we're just going to have to get pictures up because this is not doing it any justice. Yeah, because don't kill looks, yourself. We're, we're going to take pictures of a lot of this stuff and overlay it. You yeah. can really tell from the back of it, uh, from the back yeah. end. It's just yeah. obvious. Yeah. But this is a salt burn, and it's, you know, uh, the fins on the barrel – or look really dull is all I can is the best way I can describe it. Other than that, it's really hard to tell. And the, and the back end of it. Like, isn't one of those that's repro uh, where the fins, the fins are supposed to be the same width. Like it's supposed to be uniform and they're, they're not, they're like, uh, they're like recessed or, you know, like they, they, they change size. There was something with, I don't know which repro it was, but there's one where, if you compare it to a real one, you can see little differences like that. There could be bumps missing. Um, there could be little, you know, ribs on the end of the, uh, the the barrel, and they're supposed to be, you know, uniform, and they're not. They're all kind of different lengths and stuff. Yeah, I can't remember which one that is, though, because I know that the, I know that the <laughs> fins on the, on the indoor blasters they, they graduate. Like you know. They go oh, from so maybe it's the rise. reverse of what I said. Maybe they're supposed to graduate in size, and if it's all the same, then it's a, a repro. But yeah. those are the things you know you have to look out for once you learn. There's a couple of of uh, you know specific clues. Mm -hmm. um, one one thing to note as well is uh, I, I was just so surprised that you had a, a a snow trooper repro. I just I don't know why any company would waste their time with that because there's so many out there from. There's the Hoth survival packs. There's just a million of them. But um, anytime it's a weapon that is either unique itself to a figure or the color of it is unique to a figure, such as, um, you know, the, the, the gray pilot blaster is unique to the cloud car pilot and the TIE fighter pilot. TIE fighter pilot, right. So that's unique to two figures, but still it's, you know, it's, it's a little bit more expensive because of that. But if you have a weapon, um, not that this is a super expensive weapon, but the, the Zuckus slash Forlom, you know, uh, rifle, um, this was the first repro I ever got because it's jet black. It's a little shiny and it is like the stiffest accessory I've ever seen. Like it, you, it has no flex to it. Stop that laughing. Uh, yeah. But this is a unique weapon. So there's a, <laughs> what did he say? Uh, Snap it. I want to see if it's white. The this inside. is a unique weapon. So there's there's a re you know it makes sense that somebody would reproduce this because it's a you know a little bit more a little bit more hard to get. It goes Wait, Brandon. It goes one that Brandon. you just told me as real before. Uh, Brandon snapped his. Brandon's gonna break his in half. Here you go. Say something, Brandon. I already uh, I was screwing around with it and I broke it in half. Well, there it is. It's white. White. Yep. Yeah. All right, so, so let me... He's thinking about it. Here he goes. All right, Shane. Talk, Shane. Oh, oh, I'm not on. Hold on. Yeah. Here we go. All right. Let's see if I can snap it. Yep. Oh! <laughs> White as can be. So there you go. There's the Zuckus rifle Shane. that I was just holding. Shane, I don't want to tell you. It's supposed to be white on the inside, that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this one was, this was like the fakest as soon as I picked it up. It was so hard. Uh, I was like, there's no way this is old vintage plastic. <laughs> All right. Well, my repro collection just got shot to hell. <laughs> no, put it in there with them. That's what I do. Because they do have some. Let me see if I can find this Imperial Blaster here. That are not white plastic, but they are repro. Let's see. Where is it? 
I always do. I always give mine the old snap test if I think it's a repro. You just snap everything? Not everything. But if, <laughs> if I think it's a repro, it will snap. It won't, it's not pliable at all. Like this was an Imperial Blaster, but it's solid. The color's solid all the way through. But when you, it doesn't bend at all. There's no play in it at all. They're getting smart. That's why. Yeah. There's no play. And this is probably one of the ones that would float, would have floated too. And there's no mark on the magazine, like the rectangular mark on the magazine. It looks like it was meant to be, you know, it was, but then you can also tell at the end, a little stub on the end. There's no definition there. Yeah. Uh, there's no, there's no depression there. Uh, I have two rebel blasters here. <laughs> Um, and these are the, this is the backside. And I wanted to show this cause I showed this to Charles the other day. Bring it. Um, these are two that are, are that are repro. One is actually, you know, a, a more correct color being, uh, that dark blue. I mean, the black is also, uh, for, for Han Solo, uh, camouflage, the trench coat, but these are both repro because one is a square, uh, depression on there instead of a circle. And the other one is actually a raised bump. I don't know if that, cause that come across. Yep. It's actually a raised bump, which is totally wrong. The black so, one has the raised bump, right? Yeah. The black one has the raised bump on it. So, you know, those are two things that I've learned to look for on these Rebel Blasters. So the same day you showed me that, I got one right With on the eBay. bump? Yep. Has the bump. Oh, yeah. Got it on eBay. Same yeah. day. And if you look at the, if you look at the other side, um, you'll notice that there's a real difference in those three raised dots you know there is some variation in the in the legit ones on mm -hmm. those three dots but one uh, telltale sign is that i've learned is the dots are supposed to be up high touching the barrel so if there's any space above that dot between the dot and the barrel the one in the center all three well the the, the two side ones the two aside from the from the uh, center one, they're supposed to touch the barrel. And this one is even more egregious. I just snapped mine in half. The dots are nowhere near the barrel. So now it's yeah. it's white on the inside. I snapped the, mine. The Imperial, oh, Gunnery, Imperial Gunnery has that uh, weapon with all the different versions of it. And some touch, some don't. So okay. just got to double check that. It's really hard to tell with those. Uh, those and the Sabres are my least favorite because they're super hard to tell. Usually all the yellow ones are pretty easy, uh, especially the ones you can write with. But like the Imperial uh, Blasters, you can't write th with those, and neither can you write with the uh, Rebel Blasters. So those aren't painted, but those are actually molded plastic like that. So you just got to be careful with those as well. Yeah, the, the last one I have here is a, is a, is a Hoth rifle. It's just, you know, it's just the wrong plastic. It's the, the sheen on it was wrong. I forget exactly how I determined it, but this is. Just they rewrote that. Yeah. Same, same as the, uh, the snow trooper. Yeah. It's just, it's just hard plastic. I mean, I, this would be another one that you could snap because it's just hard. It doesn't have any flex to it. Um, but we should spend a couple of minutes. Let's talk about the repro figures. Um, to me, this is a little bit of a different arena. Because most of the repro figures that they make are the last 17 and the blue snags, um, the really, really expensive figures. And, and, and to me, I, I don't own any of those. I wouldn't buy any of those. But I do have a little bit of understanding why there is a company that has made a name for themselves. I think there's actually a couple of companies, maybe two companies that have made a name for themselves as a reproduction company for those figures because there's a lot of collectors out there, and especially in the last two years with the prices skyrocketing, a lot of people can't afford a $750 pop-up R2 or whatever you know it's going for right now. And the only way that they're ever going to get that on their shelf is to buy a $75 reproduction. So I do understand. I don't. We don't have to agree with it, but um, the good thing about the reproduction figures is they do have marks on them to indicate that they were purpose you know they were they were produced as reproductions purposefully by a company that sells them on their own website right so i i cannot stand reproduction weapons or accessories the figures 
I don't mind. They do mark it with the company's name on it. It does look pretty, pretty close to it too, but uh, they mark the back of it at least. You know, like a repro weapon, there's no markings on it. There's no, uh, not a company name on it, like nothing like that. Uh, the figures at least has the company name on it. So I don't really mind that. And some of the figures are like like a thousand dollars, you know, for like a vintage original one. You know, some people can't afford it. So now you have a, a fifty dollar one. It looks, you know, really close to it. That's yeah, all I, I don't have any of them in person, but I, from what I've seen online, they look really good. Um, I saw a yak face. I saw a yak face on eBay sell for six hundred and fifty dollars, and on the picture of the back of the leg, it said SLC on it. Uh, you know, not LFL. So somebody paid six hundred and fifty dollars for a mint yak face, and it was a reproduction, and it said it on the leg. So, so that's a still, Smith Lord Creations. So you still have to do your research on that because yeah. they look really, really good. Let me show you this. You see how that says Lucasfilm Limited, 1985. See that? No articulation. It's glued. It's glued together were you just petting his arm there yeah no, look, <laughs> it's broken off look see i was actually wondering what you were doing for a second and i was like yeah, i didn't want to say anything because and then i and the then i realized that the camera was only on christopher and it was like this the whole time <laughs> <laughs> but yeah there's no articulation at all all his joints are frozen it's pain and you can tell who so, makes that one john uh i have no idea but it says lucasfilm limited on it right there so somebody, wow. somebody has a mold. How much are you selling that for? Uh, this is going for five fifty since I'm missing part <laughs> of the arm. His hand broke off, so five fifty. How that did will, you get that? that one? Will not this be available on. This isn't the one boys. that I just. This isn't the one that I just sold and is on its way to, to Chris right now, for someone else. In How Australia. did you get that one, John? I got this in a lot. Um. And I was like, I didn't buy it for this figure, but when I picked it up, I was like, oh yeah, this, why are his arms glued? And I went to bend his arm and then broke his hand off. Wow. That is not what the plastic looks like on the inside of a figure. No. I don't have an answer for that. (laughs) Google. (laughs) But yeah, this one's definitely, let's try this. See, figures won't do that. Oh man! Actually, you know what? I have a uh, repro figure. I'll go grab it. Yeah. It so does. the the other the other company that I name that I've heard is a is it Stan Solo? Stan Solo Creations. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Stan Solo Creations, and then Smith Lord Creations are two of them. The one I think the figure that Charles is going to get now is actually a Stan Solo one. Another eBay purchase from him. <laughs> Which, you know, I don't know why he keeps going to eBay. I I can't stand eBay. I just, too, too many problems. Well, a lot of people feel that way. And a lot of people would rather, you know, spend their hard-earned money, maybe spend a few extra dollars, but buy from somebody, um, another collector, somebody that they've had experience with or have gotten, you know, word from other friends about the, your experiences with, just to avoid that. Because God only knows what you're buying online on just, you know, marketplaces. That's why I try and stick to like graded items or mocks, stuff like that, that, you know, I know that really can't be tampered with that much when, when it comes to loose stuff, it's like so much repro out there. It's, and then, and then just doing like a whole claim and a return is a pain. Yeah. It's a nightmare. Uh, So the, the overall sentiment from what uh, Charles was saying earlier and kind of what we're, we're, what we're getting at here is, the difference between the repro weapons and the repro figures seems to be the repro rep weapons are being made to fool people. I mean, it's, it's a devious, I mean, granted there's websites that sell them and people know that they're buying repro because they want to, you know, that's what they want to do with their collection. But a lot of it is meant to deceive people who are thinking they're buying vintage stuff. The figures 
John's figure aside, which I hadn't seen repro with the LFL on it before, but the ones that are stamped, they're not really meant to deceive anybody. They're just offering, you know, price points that people can afford. And they're, you know, stamped and identified usually by those two companies, especially uh, as as reproduction figures. So that's the difference is one is an option maybe to fill, fill out your collection at a certain price point. And the other, to me, it's kind of infiltrated the, 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 the hobby and it's meant to trick people a lot of the time. So I just got a. Uh... I just got this one in. Glass leak. That R2. made me, that made me so sick. So nice. So you can tell it's repro by these five squares right there are not supposed to be filled in blue. So these are filled in blue. And then it says that on the bottom. SLC. Oh, Myth geez. Lord Creations. But they at least say it is repro and they make it and they don't lie you know not like weapons that have nothing on it and they just wanted to you know sell something for you know thirty dollars that's worth nothing so is the five squares being filled in not being filled in is that exclusive to the glass sleet yes yep. okay yeah so they they're basically so you've got you've basically got a an American Kenner reproduction body there, right? Yep. They're, they're trying yeah. to mimic the Kenner sticker, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So they fill in the boxes, uh, blue, you know, those five that are right there. It's kind of hard to see. Mm -hmm. They fill it in with blue just to show you that it's not real. Okay. So, so they're know. selling that reproduction as a glass leak. Nobody like took that body and tried to trick Nope, no. Nope. Right. Okay. It's actually sold just like this. I never had one before, so when I saw it, I'm like, oh wow, this looks good. <laughs> but it is what it is. Yeah, that made me sick when I heard about that. Oh god. Yeah, me too. So now <laughs> so you have to go now jump through those hoops to try to, you know, come to some sort of resolution because you I'm sure you paid a, a good few bucks for that, thinking it was it's all real. it's all eBay. Yeah, it's like seventy five percent of it is probably repro, and there's a quarter that is, you know, vintage stuff. It's just it's so hit or miss on there. It really is. <laughs> is that our high sign that we're running out of time, or is that a baby monitor? <laughs> I think it's a baby monitor. Chris is like in the zone. He's been a. He's been up for forty two hours with a with a baby. So. <laughs> He's been up for three weeks. Wait, you hear you actually hear it in the background? Yeah. <laughs> so repro mocks. What do you look for on a repro mock? Oof. On the um around the bubble, how it's sealed. Are you looking for that or Yeah, um the waffle pattern obviously. Yeah, you look for the waffle pattern around the bubble. But the problem not, with that is... Not every one from. of them has a waffle pattern, though. It yeah. has, yeah, it has a press seal on some of them. Which ones? I don't think any of the... Um, wait, wait, wait. Is, is there the a YouTube pattern. video with an old lady and she's <laughs> grabbing the mocks out of a bin? <laughs> <laughs> she's grabbing the mocks and they're on a desk and she's throwing them into a giant garbage can. So you missed it last week, John. I yeah. wanted them to actually show me this YouTube video of the old lady and she's grabbing these figures. So then all of a sudden it was like, yeah, I saw a picture. I saw a picture here and a picture there. I'm like, no, I said, you guys said there's a video. Where is this video? <laughs> all the people no who watch this show, want to see this video <laughs> well un unbeknownst to you brandon the reason why you haven't heard from brandon this week is he actually drove down into mexico and he's been hiring some some actors so that he could recreate the scene for you and we could put it on our youtube channel he's got some i would not be surprised and some darth vaders <laughs> so you, you can actually see mexico from uh from where i work and pretty close to my house and there was a pretty big fire the other day and it looked like it was in the mountains and almost by it was actually it was on our side of the border 
but if it would have been a little bit more further into TJ, I could have sworn it was the, the Letty factory going up in flames. <laughs> it's like thick black smoke. I was like, look at all that plastic burning. <laughs> all those strawberry shortcakes just going up in flames. <laughs> oh man. Another thing to look for on the mocks here. I just thought about this was, is, uh, sometimes the, uh, the, the peg hole is not even, it's not even depressed. Like there's not even a, a depression around the peg hole. Does that make sense? Where, where you punch, where they it's punch. Not a, re- it's not a real peg, peg hole. It's paint, like painted it's, on. Yeah. It's printed on there. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a couple of those like that too. The card, the card backs with the three stars and the uh, ages four and up the U on the up without the little, uh, that back part of the U on there is missing. Yeah. That's a telltale sign. The, the font is usually off on those. The three stars in the top left, um, that's usually missing on, on some of the repro ones. And then you could even go further and look at the print patterns if you had like a magnifying glass and look at a, an original one compared to a newer one. But mm-hmm. now they're getting smart with those and they're using the old printers. Well, not using the old printers, but they're using old te- techniques to get the old printing style on some of the card backs. Uh, so that's another thing you got to be looking for too, but uh, look for like the yellow tape that's holding the weapon or the, you know, the inside of the bubble. If it's got a couple bugs in it or, or something that it looks like it's old, it's probably original. If it looks pretty new, then you might need to do some more research on it. And, and usually you can tell by the price too. If someone's trying to get rid of it for cheap, then it's probably too good to be true. So uh, those are just a couple things that I look for. Yeah, and the card stock too. Um, I've seen a couple that the card stock is really thick and rigid and not not pliable at all. Um, well, not not as pliable as like an like an original card too, because um, the original card is more like the back of a notepad or something, you know, the backing for a notepad. It's kind of, it's still flexible. Yeah, flimsy, they, flimsy cardboard. Yeah. Yeah. And you would probably find those on eBay. Free <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I bought some several years ago and I opened up the box. And as soon as I opened the box, I knew it. I knew that they were recards and I knew that the, the cards were reproductions because they didn't have the peg hole punched. Um, there wasn't even a die for the peg. It didn't even look like a die even hit the peg hole. You know, it was just printed on there. And, you know, that's definitely a telltale sign. And I was like, these, I got to, you know, it's, I think it took me six months to get my money back because I had to prove that they weren't original. I had to prove that they were repro. So I had to get expert opinions and stuff. So I went to like a comic book shop. I said, I need you to fill out this, you know, some a comic book shop I used to haunt all the time. <clears throat> I said, I need you to print me some a letter, or something saying that you agree that these are not. He goes, I don't know anything about those Star Wars figures. And I was like, I don't care. I just need you <laughs> on a letterhead to print out that these are fake. And I'll, you know, because I need my money back. And, uh, <laughs> he did it. So. That's a good part with eBay is you can fight it and you win like 99% of the time. So I think I got in six things this week and five were repros. Yeah. So very bad odds. You you have to be aware, though. I learned this lesson recently. I, ha- I I've had good luck, but I did have one uh, repro issue about a month ago. And you know, Charles was like, yeah, you, you know, just fight it, you know, fight it, you, you'll get a refund. And I did fight it. And initially they told me denied, you know, that they, they stood up for the seller. Um, so I was, you know, ready to be defeated. And Charles said, no, call them, call them. And it's not easy to call them, but I did find a way to chat with one of the, with somebody. And then they called me or something. And, and as soon as I got on the phone, they were, they, you know, I explained to them, this is not real. It's fake. It's not vintage. It's not, I thought I was buying a 40 year old thing. It's just fake. I tried to describe it as plainly as I could, that it was just fake, you know, garbage. And they immediately gave me a refund. So, oh, no problem. You know, we'll, we'll take good care of you, blah, 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 blah. 
and I've had an account for a long time. Maybe that helped. I don't know, 25 years or what, 20 years. Um, but you've got to like fight for yourself sometimes. It's not as easy as pushing a button always. So it is jumping through hoops. It is um, a couple extra steps. You know, you want to try to avoid that just for the headache. Um, I did want to point out one other thing. I had a memory jump into my head as I was hearing you guys talk about mocks and, and you know, recards are, are a different scenario, but mocks that are faked. Um, a memory back to collecting the Black Series. So for any modern modern collectors out there, um, if you've been collecting the Black Series for a while, you probably know this already. I'm just going to pull a, a photo up on my screen so I can uh, look at it while I'm talking. Um, the the first line of Black Series figures were in the black box with the orange. It's called, we call it the orange line. Um, the black box, uh, you know, there was some standard identifying things on there. The Star Wars logo, the um, circle with the figure's head in it. Darth Maul is what I'm getting at. Um, he was the very first figure in the line to be faked. And it was um, supposedly they got the molds from the factory in China, you know, where they actually made the figures. And somebody like stole the molds and took it to another factory and made the figures. So the figures were amazingly done because they were used the, using the original molds. Looking at the figures themselves, you couldn't tell. But on the box, the logo, the Star Wars logo was supposed to be gray inside. And on the fake box, the text is black. And the name is supposed to be in like a neon orange on the bottom. And it's more like a reddish orange on the other one. And there were some other funny things. And I'm just looking at it while I say this. He has uh, like binoculars as an accessory in there. And they're facing one direction on the right box. And they're upside down in the fake box. That was one of the number one ways to tell. And then the other thing was is the, the drawing, uh, the illustration of his face on top of the box. There was three separate spots where the illustration was incorrect, like missing a piece. So it was just these little things that started to spread through the collector community in helping each other identify. The funniest thing was not this one that I'm looking at, but the very first fake there was, it didn't say Star Wars on the top. The logo was Star Walls, W-A-L-S. So it was just like, you know, everybody could pick that out. You know, you might not see it at first when you grab the box, but it was, you know, a cheap fake from China. But um, they got better and better and better. And and there was those those really small ways to tell the difference. And then they also faked other ones in the line. They faked an Obi-Wan Kenobi and some other older ones that started to go up in value. That Darth Maul was $100 uh, when they were faking it. So it was an expensive mistake to, to buy that. So th it happens in modern too, you know, for some of the more expensive figures. I would say know what you buy and know where you're buying it from. And you'll be fine. Yeah, and experience is definitely the best teacher. It's not it's the it's an expensive teacher, but you know, when you get these you, you can tell a difference. I think everybody will agree that I mean, when you hold it and touch it and look at it, I mean, you can definitely tell the difference between repro and real. But this is an expensive hobby. Um, yes. you know, learning by your mistakes is 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 a way of life, right? Um, but Charles is right. Know who you're buying from. And I'll add on top of it again, um, this being an expensive hobby, uh, do your research, you know, don't just go out there and blindly, um, we see it regularly. We see people come into the hobby new, right. And they're very, their guns blaze and they're very excited. Uh, the next thing, you know, you know, they have the whole line and they, yeah, in four weeks they have like everything, you know, um, but do your research, know what you're buying, you know, take a pause, like really investigate what you're about to buy online. Look at the pictures, ask for more pictures. If you're buying from a, a seller that you can communicate with, ask for more pictures, um, ask some friends who are more experienced than you in the, in the hobby. Um, but just, you know, just do your research, just, you know, take your time and, and know what you're buying. All right, everybody, that caps us off for this episode. I hope you enjoyed our discussion about uh, repro weapons and mid on cards. Also, some of the other repro figures that you can buy out there that uh, might fill some holes in your collection. Remember to subscribe to Five Idiots Talking Toys. Hit the subscribe button, which should hopefully pop up on the bottom of the screen there. And also check us out on Rogue Five Toys, our new toy website. Uh, on Facebook that you can get some uh, nice little goodies in there, some nice toys, nice weapons, and other oddball items that uh, will be coming soon. I'll hand it over to John. All right. Uh, thanks again for joining us this week, and um, keep an eye out on all those repros. 
And again, like Brandon was saying and Shane said earlier, join us on our new um, sale site on Facebook, Rogue Five Toys.